Okay, hey everybody, welcome back. So, it's been a, a while since I posted a new video in this tutorial section, so apologies for that. But what I had started to do last time was we're refactoring our game scene to make things a bit more flexible and a bit less prone to error. As I was doing that, I got a lot of feedback that some people didn't understand where I was coming with it or exactly what I was trying to do. So that's absolutely not something I want to happen. I want to make sure that everything is explained clearly and that everybody kind of understands not just exactly what's happening, but why, because the why is the more important part. It's more important that you understand why you would want to do things a certain way, because that makes it more likely for you to be able to take that information and expand it on your own in your own projects. So let's talk a little bit about our game structure, where it was before the refactor, and where we're trying to move it to after the refactor. All right, so before the refactor, our game structure had a lot of important information spread between three different objects. Uh, the grid held information about scoring and counter and what level we were on. The goal holder held information about whether or not the game was won by checking its children objects to see if the goals were met. And the top UI held information about the score, and it was also responsible for getting the high score. I honestly, that one baffles me as to why I did it that way. Sometimes I do things that are just very, very strange. So by having this work the way it is right now, every object needs to communicate with every other object to know what's going on. The grid needs to contact the goal holder to find out if the goals were met. The top UI needs to find out what the high score was, and it needs to get information from the grid about what the high score should be. Uh, and what the current score is. And it's really information that no thing really needs to have. The top UI, for example, it doesn't need to know what the high score is or where it's getting the information about the scoring. It just needs to know what to do with that information. It needs to know to take the, the current score and set the label to be equal to that. It needs to know to take the counter value and set the counter label to be equal to whatever the counter value is. And then when it's setting the score, it also needs to set the size of that score bar. Uh, it doesn't need to know what anything else is aside from what it's directly given. It doesn't need to know where the information comes from. The goal holder should only do that. It should only hold the game win conditions. Uh, I don't know why I made it so that it was what was deciding if the conditions were met. Uh, the grid should only do things with the grid, moving pieces around, finding all pieces of color, finding all pieces in a column, all pieces in a row, all pieces in a box around a piece, things like that. And that's what the grid should be doing. The grid shouldn't need to know what level it's currently it's currently on. It shouldn't need to know how much each piece is worth. It shouldn't need to know what the max score for the level is. All of that is stuff that's outside of what the grid needs to know. So what we're doing with the refactor here is we're taking our current structure and we're changing it so that instead of having these three objects interconnected with one another, we're going to add an observer object called a game manager. And the game manager is going to be telling everything what they need to know. And it's going to make sure that they're only getting the information they need so that they're not holding extra information that could potentially cause a problem down the road. So the game manager is going to make sure that the grid only does grid stuff. All of that information about the level and the score of the pieces and the max score for the level, that's going to be held in the game manager. The goal holder is only going to hold the goals. Information about whether or not the goals are met will be held in the game manager. And the top UI is only going to set the values. Uh, things about what the score is or the high score, that's all going to be held inside the game manager. So that these objects are communicating only with one other object. And it's also going to make it easier to make new levels because you're not going to have to remember to set things in more than one place. You're only going to set stuff in one place, and that's part of the game manager. Now, I'm honestly, I'm, I'm not quite sure why I didn't do this to begin with, so apologies there. Uh, I think I mentioned at the beginning of this tutorial that this was my first really big project with Godot, and coming back to it a year later, I think those introductory videos were pretty solid. I kind of lost my way a little bit there around part 40, <laughs> which is crazy. I don't think there's another 60 plus part tutorial out there for Godot, so I don't know whether that's good or bad that I have I think the only one? Maybe not, who knows. Um, but yeah, so what we're going to do is move all of this functionality into one object to make it so that the objects in our game scene aren't as reliant on one another as they have been. 
Now, um, those changes can be kind of messy. So if you wanna see what I have set out as kind of like a, an ideal case for what the game should look like when we're done, I have a link to my GitHub in the description down below. You can go check that out. And the one that's the most recent, I didn't do a good job of like numbering them because I knew the numbering would kind of get out of control and would conflict with the videos. So the folder that's most recent is the most recent version of my, my updated version of this. And then the tutorial is going to slowly build to where that was. Um, so yeah, uh, if you have any questions or concerns, please feel free to leave them in the comments down below. Uh, if you enjoyed this video, give it a like and YouTube will start suggesting more videos like it. You can also subscribe and turn on the bell notification to find out when I post new videos. Uh, I have a Patreon. As little as a dollar a month helps, but you're by no means obligated to give anything at all. Uh, the way I like to see it is whatever amount of money would fall out of your pocket and you wouldn't bend over to pick it up, that's the amount you should donate. Uh, if that amount is zero, it's totally fine. Just watching is enough. So yeah, I hope everybody has themselves a wonderful day.